Good day to everybody. First, I'll give you a quick snapshot of Suncorp. Uh, we're a diversified financial services company operating in Australia and New Zealand. We're the fifth largest bank. We're the largest general insurer. The other piece is that our primary mission in life and purpose really is to price and manage risk on behalf of our customers. So our frame of reference is that lots of things go wrong. And then when you combine that with our overall business model, it's quite complex. We have multiple brands, we have multiple products, we have lots of systems, different technologies. And when you combine complexity with lots of things that go wrong, it generates an awful lot of noise that makes it difficult to see opportunity. So our question was, how could we sift through this noise and actually see the opportunity and go on to great achievement? And history has lots of great examples that demonstrate how people overcome great big problems. And there's three common characteristics that I've seen in a number, number of these examples. And the first is there's no substitute for a good congestion of talent. And the second is there typically some technological uh, achievement that's, that's overcome. And third, and maybe most important, is a leadership culture that combines clarity of purpose, where you really understand the problem you're going to solve, along with passionate curiosity, where you look beyond your own frame of reference, and you overcome the obstacles and you solve the problems. So it's a great illustration of this, and it deals with the painting of cars. Now, many of you may not know that cars were actually painted by hand up until the 1920s. And it took 37 days to paint a car, multiple coins of paint, dry it, and ready it for delivery. And the CEO of Dayton Engineering Laboratories Company, which became Delco, his name is Charles Kettering. And he had solved many other problems before. He had invented the electric starter for cars, Freon refrigeration systems, and he was aghast at this. And he challenged his engineers and said, we've got to get better at this. And they told him the most we could ever get this down is 30 days. So he looked beyond his own frame of references, went many places, and he happened upon a jewelry store in New York City. And he found lacquered dishes. And he searched out the lacquer producer, was out of New Jersey. And he connected the lacquer producer with DuPont, who was providing the paint. And they invented a paint thin enough that a car could be spray painted, a glossy enamel finish, and dried in a few hours. So he took that example back to Dayton, to his head of engineer, took his head of engineer out to lunch and said, I want you to tell me again what's the best you can do. And he said, well, it's going to be 30 days. At the, that same time, he had some people go and steal that engineer's car and spray painted a lime green. <laughs> Brought the engineer back and said, there's your car. And the engineer said, well, that's impossible. And he said, that's your problem. Your job is to make the impossible possible. And he wrote a brief in the newspaper and it said something like that preconception is a trap, that theories are just the summaries of our past experiences and not the limits of possibility. And I have a saying at Suncorp, which is the windscreen's a lot bigger than the rearview mirror. Why should we be making our future judgments based on our past decisions? So the question is, could we use that inspiration and, and broaden our own windscreen and look and see if we could stretch that limit of possibility and reimagine the IT landscape. So my CIO, Matt Pancino, and his head of infrastructure and cloud services, Terry Powell, they took it upon themselves to say, we're going to go and make a very, very aggressive plan to move to the cloud. And then they very quickly realized, quite astutely, that when you start planning of what to move, you spend an equal amount of time of what can't be done. And when you spend time talking about what can't be done, that's waste. So they made the very bold and brilliant decision to say, we're going to move everything and we'll back ourselves to have the talent and leadership to figure out how to overcome those obstacles when they do come up. So the one lesson that we learned out of this is they very quickly honed in. As soon as they decided we're going to do everything, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to focus on what goes first and then how to accelerate it. And the lesson we learned out of this is that the broader your vision, the clearer your purpose. And so the other thing that we had to do was talk about, well, how do we actually accelerate this? We've got the technology breakthroughs. We've got Amazon. That's a tick. But we have to provide the talent and the leadership to do this and accelerate this. So what we have going for us is we have an absolutely fantastic culture. It's a battle-hardened culture built on the last six years of driving agile principles and practices along with a very extensive uh, graduate and, and intern intake over the last six years. 
and some of the things that we hold near, dear to us in terms of our principles are clarity over certainty, course correction over perfection, self-directed teams uh, over command and control, and then our, our agile practices, which are around continuous delivery, DevOps, and distributed agile. In our distributed agile, we have teams around the world that are connected 24 by 7 by Skype link TVs, where the work is assigned not on the role of the hierarchy they're in, but on the skills and the gifts that they bring to the party. And we have a thing, Innovation Day, that we use to reset our own aspirations. We call it a FedEx Day. And those days, we copied it from a company called Atlassian. We didn't invent it in, in Australia. And the concept behind that day is you can work with whoever you want. You can solve any problem you want. There's only two constraints. The first, it's got to be done in 24 hours. So bring your sleeping bags and your pillows. The second is that you have to have working software at the end of the day. So we thought, what if we use that day and orient it toward Amazon? And we did. And so using Amazon technology, we had a FedEx day that, that we called Awesome API. And we had 450 people from 10 locations in four countries, 42 teams that produced some phenomenal solutions in the course of a day. And Matt Wood from Amazon came down, was in the judging panel, and awarded the winners Kindles. And the lesson that we really learned out of this is that we constantly understate what our capabilities are to solve problems. And that the biggest constraint is never the constraint of, of time or money. It's generally the constraint of thought. And the key thing is how do we reset our aspirations to get over, over the constraint of thought. So finally, so where, where are we? Andy challenged us uh, back at the end of July, says, you guys in three months, can you set up a virtual private cloud, virtual data center, have production applications in place uh, by November 1st? And we took that challenge. We overcame all the technical hurdles to do it. We overcame the non-technical hurdles, like legal and risk and security and procurement. And the net of it is on October 30th, we went live with revenue generating online applications, as well as our BI applications and data streaming. And we are now resetting our own aspirations for what's next. And in the course of that, what we were able to do was create a very intimate emotional bond with Amazon where the, the, the rising tide is lifting both ships. And, and my belief is both companies are benefiting outside of the commercial arrangement. So my final advice to all of you here uh, is that any problem can be solved. So look through your windscreen, you know, stretch your limit of possibility and opportunity, and aim for success, not perfection. Because if you don't, you'll lose the opportunity to learn new things in life. Thank you very much.